Hello and welcome back to another video. So I know, ooh, I know, Concerned Ape is releasing uh, the Chocolate Factory games uh, soon. So I know Stardew Valley 2 Electric Boogaloo is not going to be the next game, but I'm fairly sure they're going to make a sequel to Stardew Valley for few reasons. I don't think it's going to be... I don't even think it's going to be the game that comes out after the um, Chocolate Factory game. I think it might be the game after that game because you know they might want to try making a couple of other games before they go making a uh, another Stardew Valley. Mind you, this Chocolate Factory is... looks a lot like Stardew Valley, but I don't, I don't know. Um, but... Uh, you know, I was playing Stardew Valley, and you know, there's I had some like ideas of stuff that they could do, and that I would like to see in a sequel. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think you know, might as well. I was like, well, I might as well jot these down, and then you know, make a video just talking about them. So here we are. So number one is a farmer's shop. So um, something I would uh, you know like to see is the farm. Is for the farmer to be able to make their own shop. Um, so whether that's like a shop that's just like you can go into town as this building, you can buy it and then you can like turn it into a shop and sell stuff there or whatever. There's that, but I was also thinking like if you wanted to adapt, adapt it around like what was what's in Stardew Valley, you could like make a shed. And then, like, put, um, you could craft, like, or buy a, uh, till and some, uh, shells or, uh, whatever. And then you could, like, put that, them in the shed, put your stock on the shelves. And then, uh, and, you know, you could, like, open the shop, close the shop. And then, like, people would come in, look around and, like, buy stuff from your shop. And... Yeah, I just think it would be cool, and then um, depending on what you chose to sell in it, it, you know, different villagers would have different reactions. So, like, and like uh, villagers would say, uh, "Remember that um, cauliflower I bought from your shop? It, I used it to make cauliflower and cheese, and it was really nice, uh, really good quality stuff you grew there." Well, say. And for these um, examples, I am going to be using Stardew Valley as a point of reference here. Um, but say if you started, started selling like crops in your shop, and uh, then Pierre would uh, be um, would have a lower opinion of you, like he your heart with him would would lower unless they were unless they were like maxed out. Um, might lower, and then, you know, he might act, you know, rude, a bit rude that he is, like, oh, it's you, uh, or whatever, um, or if he sold ores and ingots, same with, like, Clint, or if he started selling food and beverages, um, then, you know, Gus would be a bit unhappy with you, um, but if but then you could also make it so that, um, but then you could also open this up to more things than just like farming because then you could also like, um, sell clothes there. And like, obviously, because you're selling clothes, you they get like, um, what's a Haley? Haley would be like, oh my god, I love these shoes that you made or whatever. I, I don't like Haley, but you know, you get what I'm saying. You know, you could make you can make your own shop, and then uh, you know, you could sell different items in that shop. Like, and then maybe I like, could sell like weapons and stuff that you find found in the mines. And Abigail was like, "Oh, I really like." Oh, um, what's his face from the Adventurers Guild? Um, and then you could also like set the prices. So if you wanted to. Set, sell them for cheaper that then you'd get like more customers coming in but to, you know you could sell them for, for you know for higher the price and maybe and then you know maybe they you know 
the villagers wouldn't be as likely to buy them, but, you know, it, you know, all about, like, finding that kind of right price. A bit like, um, uh, Moonlighter. Like, I really enjoyed the, uh, shop in Moonlighter. I know it wasn't, like, super in-depth or anything, but I really think that if you, uh, that would be a really good bedrock to build a, um, or good basis to build a proper, like, shop system off. And, yeah, I just think if you did that, then I think it would add another layer. And also, also, the reason, uh, partly the reason why I'm, I'm talking about, like, Stardew Valley 2 here and not just, uh, future updates for Stardew Valley is because, one, I think, uh, Concerned Dave said he's finished updating Stardew Valley, and two, something like this is more fundamentally game-changing to Stardew Valley, and I think um, it would be better to see these in a sequel, because then uh, they're not in the original game, and you're going to have the Minecraft kind of problem, where it's just like, you're going to have people who don't like it, and uh, don't like the new add-ons and stuff, so I think uh, this would be better suited for Stardew Valley 2, rather than Stardew Valley 1. Uh, second thing is, uh, having the player have birthdays, like, uh, so when you like when you create a character, you can choose what um, day you want the birthday to be on, and I think this will just add another uh, layer onto the role playing kind of thing. And then when when it is your birthday in the game, you can go up to people and they'll give you presents. Um, it's like, oh, it's your birthday today! Happy birthday! Here, have this, and you know, you can theme after them. So like, um, my name, I give you some hay. Um, Abigail give you like an amethyst or something like that or and um, like Clint might give you an iron bar Yeah, and I think that would just be uh, uh, Just nice to have uh, Just another little like layer of customization Oh and something uh, here that I really think they could you could really expand upon is like special gifts so um, normally, you can't, like, gift a character, say, a sword, or a dagger, or a hammer. But, Abigail likes to go down into the mines, but, you know, and then, you know, you could, like, give her a sword, a hammer, and a dagger, and she might have, like, different, different opinion, you know, she she'd like each one more differently, so like, she'd really like the sword, she'd like the hammer, but, but wouldn't you really like the dagger, and you know, that would give you, and then like, the higher the level, the weapon you gave her, the more hearts, you know, the more she'd like it, and I think that would be really cool, but even if you don't like, want to make it so that you can gift her, you know, weapons whenever, maybe have it be a quest, of, you know, have it be like, hey, I want to Explore more of the mines, but my uh, wep my uh, weapons are just not good enough. Could you bring me an X level sword? I and I really think something like that, like being able to gift uh, people items you wouldn't be able to gift uh, normally. You know that would fit within their um, kind of character would be interesting, and I think it would just be cool. Um, Give the go sword a good secondary attack. So, if you didn't know, all the all three other weapons have a secondary attack. The sword secondary, and this is when you right click. The sword secondary attack is a basic block that always does one damage. When if you get hit by a monster, the hammer's secondary attack is a big AOE of damage that hits twice. And yeah, that is legitimately just like the best. Um, attack, the best secondary attack, and then the dagger secondary attack is a flurry of attacks, and I believe that also has a higher crit hit rate. Um, which is strong in 1v1s, but you're often not going to be re do really fighting 1v1s, so not super good, but the sword secondary attack is definitely the worst. Like, if you still want to keep it to a block, make it so that the block does a percentage of the damage that the sword does. So, say the sword, so say it like did 50% of the damage that the sword would normally do. Um, 
And I think that, that would be decent, but I think you could do with like a bare secondary attack. Um, but I can't really think off the top of my head what a good secondary attack would be for it other than a block, like... A, ooh, maybe a lunge. Like, you press the right click and then you just like shoot for... Like, your character holds the sword out in front of them and they just shoot forward at the monsters doing, you know, a chunk of damage. And you could maybe even give it like a bonus crit, extra crit hit rate. And yeah, then then you're close up to your, uh, to the monster, then you can just like start attacking at it. And it could even have low knockback, so you just like stab it. And then you like get stuck on your sword and then you can, and then when it's done you can just like start slashing away at it. To the monster. Um, number five here is a karma system, which which would affect your luck chances, which I think is a really good thing. So, basically, if you're not familiar with this with karma, it's basically the idea that if you do something bad, then something bad will happen to you. Uh, but if you do something good, then something good will happen to you. So, um. You know, go uh, you again using Stardew Valley as a reference. Say you like give somebody a loved gift, then your the chances of you getting a good luck day or a best luck day the next day would increase. Um, but say uh, you gave somebody a gift that they hate or. Um, use the slingshot to pelt them with like stones or eggs or whatever, then your chances of getting a bad luck day would increase. And I think that would, and I think it's a really simple system that would be really rewarding. Because right now in Stardew Valley, other, other than going for completion or getting married to somebody, there's not really a good benefit to, you know, making friends. So, adding this karma system would add a big benefit to making friends, because like, oh, you're giving them gifts, it's increasing uh, your luck for the chances of getting a good luck the next day, which you could then you uh, use to get better luck down in the mines or the skull cavern. And then this, was all, this would also give... Um, like giving gift, and you know, it could also even give you like a boot, even bigger boost on if you give them a good birthday present uh, or a bigger deficit. And then uh, this will give you a reason to continue on giving NPCs gifts even after you've maxed out their hearts, because it's, because then you're just, just like uh, you're getting the um, you know, boost to your luck. So I think it's a good system, and I think you know, it just make befriending the villagers more rewarding. Uh, make it so that when fish dash, they have a cooldown between dashes. Now, my pretty much my only real problem with Stardew Valley is the fishing, and I've got in total two fishing changes that I would like to see. The first one is the why what I'm going to refer to as a fish dashing. So, uh, just in case you don't really understand what I'm talking about. When you're fishing, the fish can be in one place, but then suddenly like move up to another, up to like the top of the fishing bar, and then to the bottom again, and then back to the top. And when it does that, it basically makes it impossible to catch. And yeah, it's not fun when that happens. So I think when a fish dashes, it should have a cooldown until it can dash next. Uh, but then you could also make it so that it could d dash again before that cooldown's fully up, where it's a, a much smaller dash. And I think that would make fishing a lot less frustrating, because you're not just going to get a fish that dashes up to the top, then dashes down to the bottom, and then you fail it because you didn't have enough time within the green bar to before it just kept on dashing away from you. And, I th and that is just like one of the most annoying things, you know, with the fishing in Stardew Valley. Um, number seven, make the shortcuts cuts accessible early, because late game they aren't very useful. I think this pretty much says for itself, but I'll explain in more detail. Basically, once you finish commu the community center, you can go to Robin and get and then make community upgrades, 
Uh, one of them, uh, the first one is building Pam's house. The second one is uh, m making shortcuts, which uh, would be really helpful in the early game, but mid to late game, not really, because most of them are just uh, pretty much useless uh, when if when you've got the mine cards unlocked, which is a prerequisite for finishing the community center, which is a prerequisite for unlocking the community upgrades, and you know, you, be, you get the idea. Basically, you know, by the time you're able to get, you've just got bare mode of transportation. Uh, so I think if this was accessible early game, like you know, just like an early thing that Wobbin could do, just like hey, um, if you want me to clear make some shortcuts, you know, give me this amount of money. And I think it would be really, they would be really good daily game because you've not got the mine cards unlocked yet. And it, uh, just, and in the early game, you're going to be doing a lot of foraging and walking around Stardew Valley. So having the shortcut from the forest to the beach and having the shortcut to, um, in the mountains would be helpful. And helpful with like your foraging route. Um, and making it not take as long. So, yeah. It just needs to be early game rather than late game. Um, cooking and processing should reflect the quality of the ingredients. Uh, so what I mean here is like, if you cook something in Stardew Valley, say you cook a fried egg and you use an Iridium quality egg, that is going to give you or even an Iridium quality large egg, that is going to give you the exact same, you know, fried egg as a regular small egg. And I think that's just not fair. I think that uh, when you make, say you made a fried egg with an Iridium quality small egg, you're getting it one Iridium quality fried egg. But if you made an made a fried egg with a large egg, you'd get two of that quality. So, say it was originally Iridium quality large egg, you'd get two Iridium quality fried eggs. Um, now, the only slight headache I could see with this is when you're factoring in um, recipes with multiple ingredients. And, the, yeah, uh, all I can really say for that is just, like, add up the qualities to say, um, you know, obviously if, if you used all of the same quality, then the output would be of that quality. But, you know, say you used, like, two gold and one silver, you would have a, you know, 66% chance of getting a gold quality and a 33% chance of getting a silver quality. Or you could do it uh, by via a point system. So, say there's four items... And you basically needed 100 points to get an Iridium quality um, item. So that's, uh, well, 144, 2408. So that's two and like a half. Um, each, so say like, again, and this is just like rough off the point. So it'd be like, normal would be worth zero points. Silver would be worth uh, one point, uh, like half a point. Gold would be worth, well, no. Normal would be worth half a point. Silver would be worth one point. Gold would be worth two points. And the iridium would be worth two and a half points. And basically, when well, no, 20 points, then 25 points, it wouldn't be two and a half, it would be 20. I think, uh, you, you get the idea. Basically, they'd be worth the amount of points. And then if you got, and then those points would be added up and then the close, and then depending on where the points landed, you would get that quality of food. So say, uh, 80, 90 to 100 would be Iridium quality, 80, 70, 60 would be gold, 50, uh, 50, 40, 30 would be silver, and 20 and 10 would be gold or something like that. You again, you'd have to like tweak the numbers per recipe, depending on how many ingredients are in that in it. But yeah, um, 
And same for processing, like you put, again, you put you put a gold egg in, in the mayonnaise machine, you put a regular egg in the mayonnaise machine, you get the same mayonnaise back out. Um, I think it should work, like, you put a gold quality egg in, you get gold quality mayo out, you put large eggs in, you get double the amount of mayo. Simple as. I think that's just how it should work, and same with, like, Cheese, uh, milk with cheese and uh, stuff like that. The only problem I could really see with that is just like um, with the wine, like you get, you can have like uh, lots of different like qualities of wine. And it, well, no, I think the main problem with the wine would be not the fact that you have different qualities, but it's just like uh, you'd have uh, gold quality wine and it's like I get I guess this is like because gold quality is quite where where you know it will reduce the amount of time it takes to process in the case to get uh, a redeem quality but then if you use um quality fair deluxe quality fertilizer I think it is or whatever basically if you use the like best quality fertilizer you will always get iridium crops and uh, um, I can definitely see like an argument for that being overpowered, but that's kind of it, kind of a bit of a trade off because it's expensive and it's going to take a lot of time to process all of the wine. And you can even like say, and you can even like change it so that higher quality fruit might take a bit longer to process into the higher quality wines. I don't know. Um, I, I think. Yeah, I think that would be good. Um, number nine. If a silo is full of hay, then it, then if you scythe more tall grass, the hay will just go in your inventory, rather than just disappearing into the void, which, yeah, I just think this is a simple change that I think is logical, and I think, yeah, I think if you don't, or if you just don't have a silo, then the hay will just go into your inventory. I think that's just something like, should just be a thing, but it's just not a thing for some reason. Um, number 10. Stop the bouncing when fishing. So basically, if you don't know, uh, when you're fishing in Stardew Valley, you have the bar, and if you go from the top of the fishing thing to the bottom, the fishing bar will bounce off the bottom. That is the most annoying thing, especially uh, if I go back to the thing where you have the dashing fish that go from top to bottom, from bottom to top, then to bottom again. You have to go take a bar all the way from the top to the bottom, and if you do it wrong, your bar is going to end up bouncing, and then you're going to fail the catch. And it is really annoying. Just stop the bar. I don't see why it bounces in the first place. It's just annoying. And please get rid of it. Number eleven. NPCs should interact with furniture and decorations that you place, you know, around the town. Um. And, uh, yeah, I just think this would be really cool. And you could even, like, make it so that all the different furniture have different, like, categories, like Gothic, um, or, um, uh, words, like, Island, or, you know, they have, like, different categories. And, uh, um, you know, the villagers would, like, you know, different ones that, you know, depend on the on what category they're in. So, like, um, maybe uh, Shane would like item uh, furniture that's black and gothic, and you could yeah, and you could also make it like based around colors as well. Um, Abigail might like stuff that's purple and gaming related, or um, Manny would like thing. At things that are animal related or um, Haley would like stuff that's like pink or something I don't know or whatever you know and I think it would just be cool and I think um, that would even extend to like outside the town like you know you see an MC walking around and like they pass by a bit of furniture you put down and, just, and you, they'll just have like a little symbol above their head for whether they like it or not um, and yeah, I just think it would be cool. And then you could even have that impact their relationship with you. They could be like, "Oh wow, I love what you did with the um, 
with X item in X play in Y place or whatever. And I think it'd just be cool if they interacted with the world a bit more. Um, uh, number twelve items play uh, items prices fluctuate depending on time of year and how many of that item you have uh, sold recently. Now this is more like a cool kind of idea, but I think you know just. If you sell a ton of truffle oil, then the price uh, then the price of truffle oil will go down for the next few days, uh, and then this would uh, um, incentivize uh, people stockpiling uh, um, items and then selling them all at once, rather than just constantly flooding the mat. Uh, Keep the market flooded with the items, um, and not only that, you could also do it like pumpkins get sell for more during autumn because that's when they're more valuable, um, and well, not more valuable, more in like demand and stuff. And I think that would just be you could do some cool stuff with that. Uh, villagers number thirteen, villagers reacting to your clothing. Now, I think this would uh, be really cool. You know, they'd be like, oh, I like that hat that you got. Uh, where did you get it from? You know, I just think it'd be nice uh, if they had, uh, they'd actually, like, compliment you on your clothes. And especially if, like, again, you could do it with the furniture. Just, like, um, you know, maybe like, oh, I like this kind of clothing. You're wearing it. I really like that. Um, you know, stuff like that. Also, they could, like, uh, if you're, like, placing, like, benches and stuff around town, and, like, somebody, say, so, like, uh, I know Penny, like, sits under the tree, so say you put a bench under that tree, she would, instead of just, like, sitting on the grass, she would sit on the bench. Like, I think that would be cool. Um, I forgot to mention that earlier. Number 14. Let the player make choices that impact the NPCs and the game. So, for example, there's a cutscene where you, um, you know, f find that Mayor Lewis and Marnie uh, talking uh, near next to his house by the river, and uh, you have a you have two text options: one for uh, that's basically just like, oh, I'm not going to tell anybody, and one for I'm going to tell everybody, but uh, except for like impacting the f friendship you have, uh, nothing really change changes between which option you pick. Now, I would like it, say, if uh, you if you picked, I'm going to tell everybody, then everybody, all, like the, all of, like, the NPCs would know. They was like, and they, like, say to, say, like, oh, my God, I didn't know Manny and Lewis were a thing, and, you know, and then you'd, like, get all, like, the different, uh, different opinions from all the different NPCs. And this may even, uh, like, cause... And then I like, maybe could make it so that this caused a uh, election and there was to lose uh, the next election. And then you could even, like, do a whole thing around that way. Um, you could run to be mayor and uh, other people would run, run to be mayor. And, like, you could make it this whole thing rather than it just being a dead end. And I think get make it, you know do some really cool stuff like that. And I think also, like, um, in... Oh, Emily's. In Emily's, uh, one of her heart events, she does, like, a, um, you know, party where she, like, gets everybody to wear different clothes. And I think if it would be really cool that to, after that, you would uh, see the other NPCs wearing those clothes around time town even if it's just here now and then and not every day I think it would still be cool to see them wearing them um and I think it would also be cool uh, um for them for like so something I do enjoy is the um like the little events so you have like the flower dance you have spirits eve and they're cool but I my main problem with them is that they're really disconnected to from everything else. Like, no matter what goes on outside of those events, they're 
so they're entirely self-contained. And I think it would be cool if um, each year something it would they still happen, but something you know different would happen. Like maybe one year Abigail gets more eggs than usual, uh, or maybe. Uh, the first year, like, a couple of people don't join the egg for egg hunt, but then the next year, they do, or... Um, or, like, maybe... Um, one, for once, like, um, Abigail gets over here for all the spiders, and it, uh, um, gets past them in the... Um, uh, Spirit Eve May is, or um, Penny. Uh, Penny's just like, okay, I remember last year, you know, that uh, when I get close to that cold cauldron, I can't get myself away, so I didn't go near it. Uh, and maybe, like, Maru actually, you know, learns to find a way through the mages. And I think it would just be cool if you just, like, if it just wasn't the, ex if it wasn't just the exact same event every yeah, and it changed up somewhat. Like, and maybe, like, uh, with the Luau, the governor, like, um, make him, uh, make, uh, talking about, like, the previous years, like, uh, so, like, if he did bad the, the previous years, like, let's hope it's not a, a disaster like last year, or, you know, if it was good last year, he'd be like, oh, I hope it's as good as last, last year's uh, part. Look, that was amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I, and again, that is just like one of the things that I would really change. It's like it, Stardew Valley is a world is a bit too static, uh, in my opinion. Um, and number 15 no items should sell for less than its components. So, I, I just don't get why this is a thing, like, especially with the food, like, mainly, like, selling food is not profitable at all, like, there, there is n pretty much no food where, uh, that there is no food that I know of where you will make more money from making it into food than you would uh, just from selling the individual items, and I think that they should it make it that... That everything should at least make the same amount of money as its components. So, you know, just, and this, this would just be basic. Just like, take all the items I use to make that thing, add up their values, and uh, then, uh, you know, maybe add a bit more onto it if you want, but, you know, just have that be the bare minimum they will sell for, because I, it's just, not really fair, because it's like you're just going through more work to make it worth less. And I think, no, I think they, sh they should be worth at least the same. Um, but yeah, and there's one more that I want to talk about, but it's not really uh, number 16. It's just like something I wanted to talk about here real quick, but it's not really, because it's not that big of a feature and it's... But it's also a, a little bit of like a molly kind of thing. So basically, um, you can get the recipe is for the is it like mini warp obelisk that can uh, warp that you can make two of them and it'll warp you from one obelisk to another obelisk, but only on your farm. Now I think we should be able to craft more than two, and uh, uh, I think you know. Uh, it would be easy to do this. You could just use uh, different items for the top of it. So it's like, um, I think the base one uses, uh, that's in the game currently, uses like solar essence. It could have one use solar essence, one use void essence, one use, say, like a diamond, one uses an emerald, one uses a ruby. And, you know, they could uh, like teleport you to anywhere in town, like, and not just on your farm, and I think that would be super useful because you know, and this is already late games. I think you only get the um, I think you can only get the recipe after oh, 
I don't remember when you get the recipe, but you could make it a late game recipe, just like... But I think, you know, it would just be make it make getting around town easier. Because then you could have, like, one in Piers, um, one in Clint's, and one in the Stadue, Stadue or Pin or whatever. And, like, one in... And, like, if you're trying to, like, uh, you know, increase your house with somebody, you could put one in their house. So you can walk straight to the house. You could have a couple on your farm, one to go to the... Far left of your farm, want to go to the bottom of your farm. And yeah. I just think multiple warp obelisk would be a nice little um, quality of life change. But yeah, I hope you guys all did enjoy this video. I hope to see you guys in the next video. And bye bye.